From the far reaches of the Milky Way galaxy, it's Retro Nerd Girl with a quick spoiler-free film review for you. Today, I'll be reviewing the movie Boogie Nights, released in 1997. Starring Mark Wahlberg, Julianne Moore, and Burt Reynolds. Directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. The synopsis is, this tells a cautionary tale of an adult movie team of filmmakers and stars in the 1970s. This is a unique story for a film, so right away I enjoyed that. The story purposely lacks focus as we have presented so many revolving stories instead of following one journey, which is what most of us are used to from a storytelling point of view. It sets up the premise but doesn't follow through with a solution for the story, so as far as we know, the story could be continuing right now. And in that way, it feels a lot like a documentary, but shot in a way that you can actually imagine what it's like to be there in person. And that in itself is a fantastic feat. Much of the film is told visually as well. There is some compelling dialogue, but the visuals pay great attention to detail and selling you the idea that you've actually been transported into the late 1970s, which I enjoyed quite a bit. The 1970s and 1980s details in the film, such as the perfect choice of music, incredibly detailed set designs, coiffed hair at the time, in the most subtle of ways. The main character could be considered Eddie Adams, the teenage boy with lofty dreams who transforms rather easily into the adult star, Dirk Diggler. Eddie isn't especially likable because he's not exactly a smart character, but he seizes his opportunity to shine because he cannot see a higher design for his life. In many scenes, I just end up laughing hysterically at his character because he's such a dreamer. He has no patience to actually learn skills or anything about reality. Eddie is recruited by Jack Horner, who is an adult movie director seeking to put together his new team of stars for his movies. This segment had a sense of whimsy to it and had me smiling quite a bit. Jack is trying to make movies that actually have substance and as a team, Eddie actually helps him to achieve that. Eddie finds his groove in this sort of weird fraternity. The third most important character in the film is Amber Waves who is a part of Jack's cast. She acts as a sort of den mother looking after Eddie and young protégés in the business. She is dramatically dealing with trying to get her child back from her ex-husband, but her occupation, prior arrests, and drug abuse are really preventing all that. It's her lifestyle that's really stopping her from having her child, and it's it's done with such a dramatic sadness. Does she really have a choice? Can she quit the business? Does she have to make that choice? So yeah, there's a lot of morality questions. And through her emotional notes, uh, you really feel the humanity in the film. It makes you think quite a bit. But then it's dropped cold. It's almost as the film is saying to us, you know, that's life, deal with it, next. <laughs> you don't really get a chance to like, oh, can we just resolve this problem? It doesn't. So I could go into every character's issues in the story and tell you that none of it is actually resolved or mentioned again. Uh, for instance, Eddie has trouble with his parents in the beginning of the film and then they just disappear. You never hear of them again. Uh, a girl overdoses on drugs and then she disappears. There's a scene where there's 
there's a weird drug deal gone bad and, and nothing is made out of that we just move on to the next moment in life for these characters now what I especially loved about this film was the camera movement I especially liked I especially like the way it lingered on the characters' expressions and captured very interesting moments. The performances of this ensemble were wonderful. What an incredible cast. Burt Reynolds was amazing portraying a character that would have been otherwise considered sleazy, but he, he plays Jack with compassion and grace. He also didn't play him loud or too big, but had a very understated presence uh, that really, it, it's, it stole every single scene that he's in. And mind you that this performance was so good he was nominated for an Oscar. Mark Wahlberg was exceptional as Eddie because there's something really innocent about his delivery of the character. Now everyone was amazing as we have so many incredible actors in this. Luis Guzman, Julianne Moore, John C. Riley, Don Cheadle, Heather Graham, William H. Macy, Philip Seymour Hoffman as well as featuring many real-life adult stars. Everyone gave a really great performance. What I find about this film is that it's really sad how many mainstream actors in this film, in this very film, became ashamed of the film due to the morality of the subject matter through the years. And in a way, I can really understand why. It's it's not something you want to go and, you know, promote. And, and I think they were afraid that they were promoting that lifestyle. Maybe that's the deeper connotation and shame about the adult film industry performers and filmmakers and possibly even B filmmakers and actors fall in this category too because they don't quite measure up to the high standards of Hollywood. They kind of operate on the underbelly of society. And that's where a lot of individuals trying to make it get taken advantage of and hurt, which perpetuates the negativity of these genres. Now the film does glamorize the adult film industry in the very beginning through the eyes of Eddie, beguiled by the chance to make something of his life. But the last half of the film is, is really a cautionary tale of how hard it is to survive in that difficult institution. The film really gets seedy and then awfully dark out of nowhere, especially in the last third. And I felt it should have been spread out more throughout the film. This movie is over two hours long and it feels two hours long. So you experience a bit of fatigue by the end. You actually go through all of the emotions, laughter, remorse, disdain, terror, endearment. And by the end of it, you're kind of like famished. <laughs> it drains a lot out of you, which is some people want that when they're watching a film. So for me, this is not my favorite film, to be honest, but I definitely still appreciate this cinematic masterpiece in the way that the visual story is handled and the wonderful music that is used in the film and how it blends in together as well as the wonderful performances that we got out of this. And in the mix of it is a very touching story about characters coming together as a strange family of sorts with Jack being the father figure and Amber Waves being the mother figure to this misfit group of outcasts. It's definitely worth watching at least once. My rating is a 7.3. Well, that sums up my quick spoiler-free review. This is Retro Nerd Girl signing off. 
Take care, movie lovers. I'm off to my next review.